Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Let's talk about what happened. Uh, more beer for us. Great day. Whether you took my advice on the free prop here on YouTube and took the Seattle Seahawks um, getting seven and a half points uh, at a uh, minus 350, or whether you were a premium customer on Dwyer VIP and took the Seahawks on an alternative line laying a point and a half, or took the under on an alternative line, the under 55, you made out nicely. Not every event is going to lead to uh, us being able to buy top shelf at the bar, but this one did, and I'm grateful. Let's talk about a few things about this uh, Super Bowl wrap-up football for this year. Let me just say that the Seahawks were just much faster than the Denver Broncos, right? That's what leapt out at me. Percy Harvin didn't play much this year due to injury. You saw his impact early in this game. The Seahawks came out. They were moving all over the field. It looked to me like Denver had a quandary, right? They had to be cognizant of the middle of the line because they couldn't have Marshawn Lynch run over them. But when they packed the middle of the line, Seattle was too fast and able to run to the outside. Right, Russell Wilson, too mobile for the Denver Bronco defense. Right, the Broncos simply didn't have the firepower defensively to match up. On offense, let's face it, their offensive line had problems against people like Cliff Averill. Right, just couldn't stop him. He's the guy who tipped the ball that then got picked and run back for a touchdown by the MVP winner. Right, so Denver was really out of their league. You could sense that when Demarius Thomas kept catching these little crossing routes and then getting immediately tackled. Right, Denver Bronco wide receiver simply couldn't break tackles, simply couldn't get downfield. Peyton Manning just didn't have enough time to throw the football, right? And let me also say, too, style-wise, Peyton Manning's habit of coming to the line and coming up with complicated counts where he's saying Omaha and he's changing the play and he's doing this, that, and the other, I think, puts his team on pins and needles, right? I don't think that style is conducive to win in noisy, high-stress championship games like this one, right? Manning is a little bit too neurotic in such games. I thought Russell Wilson, by contrast, was a smooth customer. For those of you who don't know who Russell Wilson is, understand his first two years, he's had a 100-plus quarterback rating both years. Understand in this game, in which he did not win MVP, he threw two touchdowns, no picks, had a quarterback rating of over 120. Understand that Russell Wilson's quarterback rating in this game was higher than Peyton Manning's quarterback rating in any Super Bowl in which Peyton Manning has played. Right? And so, this was one of those rare situations where, for some odd reason, the inferior team was favored in the match. I attribute it to a lot of public money. The fact that Seattle isn't, you know, uh, let's say, as well known as teams coming out of traditional places like Denver, right? I don't think the public fully understood just how good Seattle's defense was. Now, we've seen this team before. I'm telling you the Seattle team is special. They're one of the youngest teams in the NFL, and yet they're the champions, right? With a young quarterback, understand this was the Super Bowl where these guys were going to have butterflies, right? This was their first Super Bowl. Well, just like the Pittsburgh Steelers in the 1970s, the San Francisco 49ers in the early 1980s, 
the Dallas Cowboys in the early 90s, the New England Patriots in the early O's. You're talking about a team with a young quarterback with team speed that seems to just be getting started. Right? I think this team, quite frankly, could easily win multiple Super Bowls with pretty much the same cast. Right? With pretty much the same players. There'll be some additions. The additions might surprise all of us. Let's remember, the 49ers won their first Super Bowl in the 1980s without Jerry Rice on the roster. Right? I'm sure the Seahawks are going to draft some guys. Pete Carroll seems to be one of the best personnel men in the business. But understand, when you have a secondary that has people like Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, the way they play together, as long as those guys are healthy, as long as those guys are able to get on the field as a unit, I do not see, especially with the 49ers suffering Navarro Bowman's injury, right? I simply don't see a team that can feel the kind of defense that Seattle is going to be able to put on the field next year. Understand, over time, playing together is only going to help these guys, right? People who follow football feel that the Cowboys left some championships on the table when they foolishly fired Jimmy Johnson. Here, Seattle has, I believe, the wealthiest owner in the NFL. He's not going to let Pete Carroll go anywhere. I'm guessing that this team stays together, understand... Russell Wilson is still going to be under his rookie salary next year. Let's just do the math. Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl. Joe Flacco was able to get $20 million a year. Russell Wilson, who has never been under 100 in quarterback rating in any of the two years that he's been in the league, right, who has never had his team lose by more than seven points in the NFL. Think about that. Right? Russell Wilson right now is getting paid less than a million dollars a year. So with the nineteen million dollars that they're saving by paying Wilson one million dollars versus the going rate of twenty, they're able to spend that nineteen on team infrastructure, on superstar players. Right? They're able to keep talent, they're able to recruit talent. They're able to sign guys like Percy Harvin, who proved to be a difference maker in this Super Bowl. So I believe Seattle is just getting started, right? This could change with debilitating injuries, right? If Russell Wilson gets hurt, if Richard Sherman gets hurt, things are going to change quickly because those guys are difference makers. But if everyone stays healthy, this is a team to watch. Understand, this Super Bowl, no one knew who they were. They were the underdogs in this Super Bowl. I'm just here to tell you next year, I'm guessing they don't face a team with history's best offensive numbers. I'm guessing America looks at this team and starts to recognize them as guys wearing rings. Right, so we lucked out here. We got in early. This team delivered for us. Next year, I'm guessing whoever they play, whether it's Denver, whether it's New England, whether it's Andrew Luck in Indianapolis, whether it's Alex Smith and the Kansas City Chiefs, right, whoever it is, right, I'm guessing the Seahawks are probably going to be favored. They already have one of the best home field advantages in the entire NFL, right? Barring injury, they're probably going to be, even with the kind of schedule that the defending Super Bowl champions have, they're probably going to be 6-2 and two or 7-1, and one, if not 8-0 oh at home. That means that if they just go 500 on the road, and don't kid yourself, this is a team 
that on the road beat Carolina in the regular season. And, of course, Carolina was the two seed in the NFC, right? If they just go 500 on the road next year, you're looking at 10 wins, right? Minimum. Now, let's talk about Denver's future. I'm not as optimistic. Why? Because Denver right now doesn't have the speed or the athleticism or the youth of the Seattle Seahawks, right? And Denver has big question marks. Champ Bailey missed an extended period of time this year, right? Is Champ Bailey still Champ Bailey? I've been here online. I've been talking about the fact that after starting with a splash, after routinely getting, you know, 40-odd points a game, the Denver Bronco offense slowed down considerably. Look at their last three games, folks. Each of the games were under 30, right? In the Super Bowl, they were under 10, right? Early in the season, Julius Thomas, who had a career year, snuck up on a lot of teams. By the end of the season, teams figured out how to have the Cam Chancellors of the world slow him down. Right? He was shut down in the Super Bowl. Right, I get the feeling some of the novelty is gone. I get the feeling there's some age on the team. Right? Not just Peyton Manning, not just Champ Bailey, but also guys like Wes Walker. Right? If you look at the running game, it was contained yesterday. It's my understanding no Sean Moreno is also a free agent. Right? I think that team is going to have some problems, especially given what appears to be the reemergence of the Kansas City Chiefs in their division, as well as the reemergence of the San Diego Chargers. Let's remember, in that AFC West, both of those teams made the playoffs. Right? So, I think Denver is going to face some challenges. I think uh, New England right now is facing a lot of challenges, right? I think the AFC better hope that these teams either have spectacular drafts or that one of these younger teams, team like perhaps the Colts, gets back Reggie Wayne, is able to gel, has a good draft, firms up their running game, realizes, sorry, but we're hard here, realizes that Trent Richardson might not be the answer at running back and retools. But make no mistake, right now, assuming everyone stays and everyone stays healthy, Seattle, to me, looks like they might be at the beginning of a dynasty. Think about their road to the Super Bowl. They beat New Orleans. They beat the 49ers. They follow that up by destroying the Denver Broncos. They did not walk in the back door. They came in the front door. And what does it all mean? It means we had a great weekend. Congratulations for bearing with me on this game. I know I made a couple of videos here online, offered a free prop bet, offered premium picks, premium prop bets on my Dwyer uh, sportsbetting.com site. They all delivered. I thank you. Let's all look forward to the upcoming season. Thanks for stopping by.